Welcome back to Road to Abundance, guys. Today, I have a special guest, the sleep doctor. Uh, so it's one of my good friends, Michael. I met him actually, I think, a little over one year ago. And uh, yep. I went to a men retreats and he was the first guy when I got in the van. We had the same name. We started talking. Super amazing guy. And uh, I'll let you introduce yourself because you have multiple titles, multiple things that you do. <laughs> so... <laughs> Absolutely. So thanks for having me on today, Mike. I really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for trusting me with your audience. I honor that. Um, I'm super excited to be here. So Michael and I have known each other for a little while. We belong to a men's group together called Metal. It stands for Musicians, Entertainers, Technology, Artists, and Leaders. And it's a heart-centered men's group. And we go places and learn about each other, learn about um, spirituality, learn about self-growth, learn about physicality, mental health, the whole gamut. Um, and uh, Mike, got a, Mike and I got a chance to get to know each other. We w did a retreat together, uh, which was super amazing. Um, we had lots and lots of fun together, so lots of adventures there. My background is, is a little bit different than Michael's. Uh, I have a PhD in clinical psychology, and I am uh, medically board certified in clinical sleep disorders. So you might be saying to yourself, wait a second, this guy just said he has a PhD, and then he's, now he's saying that he's medically board certified. How can something like that happen? So I am the crazy guy that took the medical boards without going to medical school and passed. I'm one of 168 people in the world who have ever done it. Um, and the reason I did it was because I wanted to find, so I'm in, I was interested in insomnia in particular, <clears throat> and it has a very hard mental side and it has a big physical side. And so I decided to spend my time on the mental side of insomnia because quite frankly, that makes up a very large portion mm -hmm. of insomnia. Um, and then um, I said to myself, well, I kind of understand the emotional side of things, the philosophical side of things. I'm going to learn the medicine. And so it turned out that there was an opportunity for a small period of time where you could take the sleep medicine boards without going to medical school. So I studied for a year and um, I took the boards and I passed. Now, I want to be clear about something. I'm not some genius, um, some <laughs> super duper smarty pants guy. Um, I'm a guy that studies really, really hard. I sat in the front row at school. I was a B student. Um, but I work and I work hard and I, I have a path and that's the way, that's the place that I go. And I was fortunate to be successful. So I uh, passed the boards, uh, practiced for about six years in Atlanta, Georgia, which is where I'm from. And uh, then I got an opportunity to do what's called a sleep laboratory roll up. So I was working with a group of doctors and business people who said, we want to buy sleep labs all over the country, create economies of scale, work with insurance companies. And so I decided to do that. I did that for approximately two years um, and then decided that the corporate life wasn't necessarily my kind of gig. <laughs> so I went back into medicine and I started treating patients uh, and writing books. Uh, and I've been very fortunate. I've written four books. Uh, several have been Amazon uh, bestsellers. My most popular book is called The Power of When, and it looks at these things called chronotypes. Uh, for folks out there who might not have heard the term, you actually know the concept. If you've ever been called an early bird or a night owl in your life, or you know people that are, those are chronotypes. Uh, it turns out that they're genetic, and I've uh, discovered a way through a quiz to teach people what their chronotype is, and that actually opens up this whole secret path for when to go to bed, when to wake up, when to drink coffee, when to have sex, all of these other things. I can literally <laughs> tell you based on your hormones and this chronotype, um, all, the th all the different <clears throat> things that you want to do. So I've been writing books, doing media, uh, and helping patients for quite a while, 23 years, believe it or not. Um, so uh, that's kind of where it brings me to today. Uh, in terms of now, I still continue to write books, see patients, uh, and I have a very popular website. It's called thesleepdoctor.com. I also have all the social properties. So we release all kinds of content. I'm even on TikTok and all this other <laughs> insanity out there teaching people about sleep and having a good time. That's awesome. So also now you're mostly retired doing what you like. So it's like when you're retired, you get to do what you like. I believe that you can do yeah. it even before you're retired. So actually... I'm retired because I do what I like and then I just work a little more. <laughs> and, um, but I want to recap, like, that's amazing. Like that's a lot of thing. And I want to recap because my goal is to understand before we give people advice on sleep and all that stuff. My goal is to understand 
what made you successful and how having those healthy habits and uh, meditation and all the good stuff, how did it increase for you to be very successful and lead him uh, like selling your company and doing other stuff? And yeah, yeah, I've got, I've got actually quite a few stories for that. So I, the, the first one I, I think makes the, the most sense to talk about is, is the thing that got me through the boards, right? So I'm going to take the medical boards. I haven't gone to medical school. How do you, how do you accomplish a goal like that? Right. How do you, how do you succeed in a goal? Can like you that? still do it? So the answer is simple. The answer is simple. It's one word. It's persistence, right? It's just not stopping. Every single person I knew, except for one person told me there's no way I could do it. <laughs> every one, every single one. There's one person that actually inspired me to take the boards. Turns out it was my wife. Um, she was my girlfriend at the time, uh, but my wife now. And um, I, I, she challenged me. She was like, I think you could do it. I was like, are you crazy? She's like, no, really. I think, I think you could do it. Um, and I was like, oh, so I, I didn't really have the, I didn't have the belief in myself at the time <laughs> to overcome this tremendous goal that everybody told me I was never going to overcome. And all I needed was one person to a meaningful person in my life to, to give me that motivation and to have that confidence in me. And that was all it took. We were only dating. Like it wasn't like we were married at the time. We were only dating at the time. And she was like, I really, honestly, I think you could do it. And so I took a year of my life and I planned my work and I worked my plan as they say, right. And I created a goal. Um, and so persistence, I would argue is the most important aspect, most uh, from a person aspect that I've ever had. I just don't take no for an answer. Um, now that's not to say that I don't fail and that's not to say that I don't go in the wrong direction at times and need to turn around and come back mm -hmm. and, and go into another direction. But, um, I'm, I'm one of those people who I, I don't care who you are. The likelihood is I can outwork you, right? Like that's my motto is I can work harder than anybody I know. And I do work harder than anybody I know. And I always have, uh, and I like work. Um, it was funny when I would go on job interviews, people would say, what's your, What's the biggest problem with you? And I'd say, <laughs> my problem is I work too much. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like that's what but I you like love to it. do. That's where I get my So energy. that's why it's I important. Do. I love it's it. like it's where I get my passion, mm -hmm. it's where I get my energy. I mean, I enjoy I enjoy working with people like you. I other, you know, whatever the field is, like there's a lot of commonalities that we learn to become successful. And so the goal is always to try to figure some of those out. So let me let me give you a couple of my secrets if I can, mm -hmm. um, that that I found within the last few years that unbelievably upped my game and then allowed me to get to the point where I could sell my company and be successful. Right. So the very first thing I did was I took control of my schedule. Okay. So and this is very difficult for a lot of people to do, Mike, is they feel like they always have to be answering to their customer and they always have to be mm -hmm. figuring out the next move. That's not always the right case. Okay. And so here's what I did was I worked with my assistant and I said, here's what we're going to do. I'm never going to have a meeting that's either longer than 25 minutes or longer than 55 minutes. I always want that five minute break so I can stop the meeting, take notes because it's, I go to meeting back to back to back. I can't remember what happened three meetings ago. So every meeting it's halted and the, and the zoom turns off. <laughs> like I let everybody know, right? I'm like, Hey guys, we're going to be talking for a little while here, but I'm letting you know, this thing's cutting it at 25 after because I need to take notes on the meeting and move on. And um, everybody really respects that. It's kind of cool. The second thing that I did was I fit in three breaks every day. One of those breaks is lunch. Okay. And that's an important thing. A lot of people, they'll burn right through lunch. They don't think of your nutrition is everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you are not well nutrition, yeah. you ain't making it through your day, bro. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's not going to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I have, so I never work for longer than two hours at a stretch. Then I have a 15 minute break right? Then I have two hours, then I have lunch, then I have two hours then I have a break and then maybe two hours. That, that's how I started working my schedule with her. Then I said, here's what we're going to do. We're not going to work on Fridays. We're going to take a half day off on Fridays, every single Friday, work it into the schedule. And, and all of a sudden there's all this freedom in my schedule yeah. because I have breaks. I'm not feeling stressed. I'm not feeling like, Oh my God, I'm running to get ready for this meeting to then get ready. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, this is moving at a better flow for me, right? Because before I used to, I was chasing the client. I was chasing the opportunity. Now the opportunity is fitting into my life and my schedule, which means I'm no longer stressed. 
about creating this opportunity or chasing this opportunity. I'm ready yeah. for the opportunity. And that allows me to perform on said opportunity. So I would argue that taking control of your schedule is one of the most important things you can possibly, possibly do. And, and here's the thing is my assistant wasn't very good at first. <laughs> she would say, she would say, well, this client says that if, if you could just, if we can just move your break, no, I'm not moving my break, reschedule the client. Well, we're going to lose the, the, the funding, you know, we're going to lose the money that we would have, I don't care, move the client, right? Because again, that, that, that attitude of scarcity is not where you need yeah. to be, right? The client's going to come back. If you're good at what you do, don't, I don't care what you do. If you're good at it, client's going to show back up and the client's going to follow your rules. Clients need discipline. Okay. And you have to provide those guardrails. Otherwise they're just going to ask you for everything and, and mess up your process. And then you can't serve your other clients yeah, well at all. I totally agree. Like <clears throat> that's one thing I, I used to do in the past. It's like, I wasn't actually putting time schedule. Now I do the same. It's like, um, it's going to be 30 minutes. It's going to be this. And then you, you have to be if you respect your time and yourself, your client will respect yourself. Imagine I tell people like, imagine that Tony Robin is like, bro, I give you 10 minutes. You'll be like, I take it. Mm -hmm. When That's right. it's like next year at this date, I'll be there as fucking put it on the schedule. So mm -hmm. the thing is, That's right. uh, it's, it's like money. It's like people are like, Oh, when I'll be successful, I'll do it. Or when I'll be successful, I'll feel successful. No, you need to apply it from the beginning. You need to feel successful. Now you need to, if you, cause, cause, it's like, oh, I'll start saving money when I'm rich. No, like if you take the habit no. of doing things now, when things get bigger, you'll keep the same habits because we both know That's that right. habits is like very hard to, very hard to change because a lot of them are subconscious and you can click mm -hmm. them, but most of people, they, it's going to take a little while. So yeah, well, it takes longer than a little while for most people. Most people fail when they try a new habit. Um, and it happens very, very frequently, especially if you're not trying it like with a friend mm -hmm. or a partner who can get, motivate you or make you accountable for the habit. Um, I came up with, a, I heard a friend of mine came up with this idea um, that I've adopted and we call it the habit of the month club. Okay. So <laughs> like, you know, New Year's is coming yeah. up, right? And a lot of people want to have New Year's resolutions and change their lives and get, become better people and all this kind of stuff, right? completely overwhelming. By the end of January, they failed on almost everything, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Cause it's, it's too much, right? Habit of the month club is you pick one, one thing you want to try. You try it for 30 days. You don't try anything else. Try that one mm -hmm. thing. If your one thing is breath work. Awesome. Yeah. Try breath work. Make sure you do it the majority of the time. I'm not talking three days a week. I'm talking five days a week, six days a week, like really give it a shot, mm -hmm. right? Maybe it's meditation. Maybe it's going for a hike on Sundays, right? Whatever your thing is to make you a better you, whatever that means, that could be emotional, that could be spiritual, that could be financial, career, physical, whatever it is, one new thing a month, you'd be surprised how quickly you'll rack up some yeah. good habits um, and they work really well. Now, there's some science behind what I'm saying too. Um, BJ Fogg who's a dear friend of mine who writes books. Uh, he wrote a book called Tiny Habits. Um, out of Stanford. And what he discovered was it takes 21 days to establish a habit. Yeah. 21 days. <clears throat> so I'm telling you guys, just knock something out for 21 days. And it could be, it could be work related too, right? So for me, here's one of the ways that I did it. So I have to read sleep studies all the time on patients. Mm -hmm. um, and I have quite a few of them. And sometimes it gets into my workout schedule. So here's what I do. Every time I read a sleep study, I drop to the floor and I do 10 push-ups. Read a sleep study, drop to the floor and do 10. You see what yeah, I'm doing it's, here? It's, uh, I'm it up. it's habit stacking. So I created actually the uh, habit tracker for myself. And uh, it's one of the thing I teach people. And there's like a lot of thing like how to create new habits, how to habit exactly. stack. And for me, I use this little grid. And now I have a lot of habit because like fitness, like anything else, it's like I've been doing it for right. years. But like you said, at the beginning, you start. And what I put more line is that you can add every month. So you start with like, let's say you're doing five things, then you, you oh, add right. one and then I, you reward yourself only if you're full of check. And as you can see, I'm not perfect. There's, I still skip some stuff. Like let's say I was supposed to go yeah. to the gym and then, uh, I had like my leg muscle was spasped from a run. So I skipped the gym. So then it's just, I'm like, okay, then I don't do this. But like you said, it's like, if you have it stacked, let's say supplements and you take a coffee every morning, take your supplements with your coffee. 
it, exactly. Like if you do things like one of the, that, that they were saying, let's say, you know, you brush your teeth every day. That's a fact in right. the morning. If you put your vitamin and your fish oil and everything next to your toothbrush and you That's take right. it right after or before you brush your teeth, habit stacking, you won't forget. And that's what I tell people like, cause same with fitness, they try to do everything and then they fail at everything because I need to cook. I need to do this and chill. Start with going to the gym. When you succeeded, just that start eating healthier and healthier and replace one, two, three, four day, five day and grow it up. So yeah, absolutely. And, and what we can find too, is that we don't have to be perfect mm -hmm. in, in our pursuit of these habits, right? We're supposed to fail because we're supposed to figure it out because it's going to be unique for us, <laughs> right? So I had a perfect example is this morning, I, uh, I got up and I was doing my meditation. And when I stood up, I felt a super sharp pain square between my, uh, my shoulder blades. And I was supposed to do, I was supposed to go work out and I was supposed mm -hmm. to do bench today. And I was like, no <clears> way. <throat> like my body, is, I mean, it, I mean, I couldn't breathe. Like, it hurt. <laughs> like, you know, when you breathe in and it yeah. hurts, like that was where I was at. And I was like, okay, I don't need to do that. But I went for an extended walk with my dog, mm -hmm. right? So, so again, you don't have to go to the intensity every single time that you might have gone to, but sometimes it's okay to just make the checkbox, right? If I go for an extra 15 minute walk, well, that counts as my workout today. Yeah. Now it's not nearly as stringent as me doing a full chest, you know, full shoulders, full buys and full <laughs> tries and a 25 minute on cardio, right? But I can't do that today. Yeah, exactly. But I can have an accomplishment. I, and my accomplishment is I'm going to check the box and say I did my fitness for the day. Yeah, it's one of the the four agreements from Miguel Ruiz is always do your best and your best will change every day. So it's like, wh what That's is right. your best today? Like, and, and some people are like, oh, I don't feel that good today. Well, do your best for how you feel. And if you, if you normally you can change your mood, yes. But if you, someday I feel I'm like, yo, I want to relax. I look at my girlfriend. I'm like, today I'll, I'll chill. And she's like, okay, me too. Or whatever. And then you're like, so then you'll be productive instead of being busy because obviously you're right. like, okay, let me work two hour, very focused. And then I take off the rest of the day. Like you said, like took off Friday. Right. So that's really good habits. And, um, you're eating very healthy. Cause you know, like the gut and the brain it's like, so here's the, so let's talk about that for mm -hmm. a second. Cause I've seen you take two sips of water since we've been talking hydration, hydration, hydration. Okay. Like I can't say this enough. I, and I'm, I'm the sleep doctor. Okay. And I think hydration is more important than sleep. Okay. It's, it, there's only two things in life I think are more important than sleep and that's air and water. And that's so it. Breathing okay? and, I, <laughs> and, and water. Right. Breathing, breath work, <clears throat> meditation, you know, mindset, hydration, sleep. You do those three things. Everything else is great. Yeah, you know what exactly. I'm Everything else works. And and Tony Robbins says, uh, and even Gary Vee came back on that because he was like, guys, it's like I fucked up. Like pushing the hustle shit. I forgot to tell you to go to sleep. Like, and Tony Robbins is like, I was trying to be so productive, and at some point, the doctor was like, hey, you need to sleep. You're 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 using your health. So people, because they're trying to make too much money too fast, they forget to sleep, and then it's gonna impact. It, it's like you're taxing your body. So. So this is an area that I think is very, very interesting, and I call it entrepreneur health, right? So people who are starting a new business, right? Entrepreneurs or people who are hustling, they've got one job, two job, three job, right? Trying to get there. The biggest thing that they overlook is their health, okay? And what happens? They drink too much coffee oh, and they get too little sleep. Those are the two so big, bad. big, big things that happen because they say, I need energy and I need time. <clears throat> Right. And so, so they take out sleep to get more time and they increase caffeine to get more energy. Here's the problem is that will work for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. Right. But your body will catch up. Yeah. Um, and, and, it, and it won't be happy to be clear. I mean, you want to talk about abundance. You ain't going to have no abundance when you have no sleep. Right. And too much caffeine on board. And that's what a lot of entrepreneurs do. And here's what's really interesting is they become sleep deprived. Mm -hmm. Right. So and what does sleep deprived mean? That either means they don't get enough minutes or the quality of the sleep that they're getting is terrible. Yeah. Right. And so what we really have to look for is balance. Right. And so when we're when we're thinking about abundance, when we're thinking about success, I don't know a lot of successful people who have maintained their success without balance. Mm -hmm. So I know Tony Robbins actually fairly well. 
And, you know, Tony is an interesting, interesting human because what he does is the is the ultimate. He does the ultimate uh, physicality, energy, and then the ultimate relaxation, yeah. right? And he has the opportunity to do that. He has the resources. He owns an island in Fiji, okay? So, like, if this dude wants to relax, he's relaxed, yeah. okay? Like, I get that. Not all of us can own an island in Plus Fiji, Plus the top right? expert in the world to help him with his health. It's like... Right. Absolutely, right? Like, we're buds. So, at the end of the day, the thing to re remember is balance is everything. Before I do my breath work, before I do my meditation, I send up a signal for balance, right? Like that's what I'm looking mm -hmm. for. I'm always, always looking for balance. And balance is important, not just for difficult times, but for good times as well, right? So happiness, balance, sadness, balance, all of the above. Yeah. It's all about kind of being able to stay there and be true <clears throat> to yourself and true to the people. That's that awesome. Well, come back to coffee in a second related to sleep. Sure. Um, when, uh, when we're talking about water, like, uh, in this thing, um, just a, a quick thing guys about water is this water that I have here has hydrogen in it. So there's a big thing about pH water right now. It's, it's kind of a myth. Yep. Uh, you're supposed to drink seven pH water. Now they say nine or uh, like, it's good. It's not going to be good for digestion. And if the only no. benefit of pH water is that there's more hydrogen in the water. So get yourself an hydrogen machine. If that's what you're looking for and drink normal pH right. water and, Right. Don't buy those expensive pH shit because I tested them. Most of them is not true. And you can, if you need a machine, I'll refer you. That one is like four or $5,000, but you can pay it monthly. Um, and, and water is amazingly important. And that's another thing. In the morning, you want to drink one liter of water before you get in your coffee. And we'll talk about how coffee affects sleep. Um, because yep. let's say myself from all the study that I did, uh, sometimes I just cut mm -hmm. caffeine totally. And now if I take, I'm going to wait until three, four hours that I'm up and I'm going to take it in between 11, a, 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. And I don't after because it has like a 12 hour lifetime span. So this will affect your sleep. So you're close on almost all of it. So let me give you let me give you the, the, the final numbers. <laughs> on this. So under, so here's what we really here's what we recommend. So. You can uh, consume a liter of water every morning, no problem. Most people can't. So what we do is we ask them to do 15 to 18 ounces, right, of water. So a, a bottle of mm -hmm. water. So what I tell everybody is get a bottle of water. Maybe hopefully it's in a reusable, not wasting plastic kind of thing and have it sitting by your bedside in case you get thirsty yeah. in the middle of the night. As soon as you wake up, pound it. Just drink it. Shut up and drink it. I don't care if it. I don't care if you want to put ice in it. I. I don't care. Drink the damn water, mm -hmm. okay? And the, guess what? That's the first thing on your checklist for success for the day. I drank mm -hmm. my water. If nothing else goes good that day, you're hydrated. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like, and let's be honest, bro. There are some days where nothing goes good, but hydration. Exactly. Right? Like that, that's okay, and it's like it's right? super so, cheap. Six dollar. So twenty four dollar, you get four bottle like this. It's this is one liter. So I just fill that up. I leave it on my bedside yep. and I just, while I do my morning routine, I make sure I drink that. So that's how I do it. Absolutely. Cause the, and so here's the thing you want to hydrate before you caffeinate. Right <laughs> now, Michael's hundred percent correct about this. Now here's, what's interesting is if you look at it, many people don't know this, but sleep in and of itself dehydrates your body. Just the humidity in your breath, you lose almost a full liter of water every single night. This is why Mike is putting another liter of water in himself. Okay. So that's the one for one. You don't have to put in a full liter, start with a bottle mm -hmm. and work your way up if that's what you need, right? Understanding where you should start becomes a very big process. In this. Second thing is about caffeine. So you're doing it right. You're waiting to do your caffeine. Now I'm going to be honest with you. There's a lot of people out there that can't exactly. wait till 11 o'clock. <laughs> okay, brother, I'm just going to, I'm just going to be fair uh, and let you know that. However, here's where the data gets very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a little bit of a story. So in order for the brain to wake up out of a state of unconsciousness, you need two hormones, adrenaline and cortisol. Okay. Very important hormones. They jack up and boom, you wake up. Now, here's what's interesting. If you compare the strength of cortisol and adrenaline to the strength of caffeine, it's like comparing cocaine to weak tea. OK, adrenaline and cortisol are 100 times more powerful than caffeine is ever going to be. Mm. When you've got that wandering around your brain because it was needed to wake you up and you add caffeine on top of that, it really doesn't do a whole lot of good. 
In fact, what it will does most of the time is gives you the side effects of feeling jittery or talking too fast or, you know, getting a dry mouth and things like that. But if you wait 90 minutes after you open your eyes, cortisol and adrenaline begin to drop. And then when you drink the caffeine, it actually increases the cortisol and adrenaline back to morning wake up levels. Mm -hmm. So if you wait just 90 minutes to have your first cup, you're in so much better shape. Yeah. Now, let's talk about the other side of this is when <clears throat> should you stop caffeine? Okay. Now, remember, caffeine actually has a quarter life of 12 hours, not a entire life of 12 hours. So let me explain what that means. So half of the caffeine, you drink a cup of coffee at noon, half of it is out of your system by six o'clock at night. By midnight, 75% of it is out, but 25% is still in. Okay. For caffeine to be completely out of your body, it, I believe it takes close to 18 hours. Ooh. Right. So, so remember caffeine, if, if you can stop, stop. Because if, if I had to pick one habit that I would love for people to do other than wake up at the same time every single day, which is the number one habit for sleep would be to eliminate caffeine if you can, or at least keep it in a small window. Yeah. Now, one other thing before you hop in is I want to be honest with people. If you are a <laughs> four, five, six cup a day drinker of caffeine, do not go cold turkey. Oof. Okay. I've had, I've had two patients end up in the hospital. Uh, one who had seizures and the other who couldn't stop throwing up. Yeah. So if you drink a ton of coffee, let's say you drink six cups a day, make one of those cups decaf for a week, then make two decaf, then make three, slowly <clears throat> work your way down. Okay. Yeah. And by the way, if anybody out there is going to turn to me and say, oh, I don't really drink coffee for the caffeine. I drink it because I enjoy my morning rituals. That's bullshit. Okay. I'm letting you know now, drink some tea or drink decaf coffee. The second I turn to somebody and say, well, drink decaf, they say, oh, it doesn't taste the same. <laughs> taste the same. That's how you know it's bullshit. So yeah. And, and it's, it's, exactly it's like same. a very addictive that people can't stop. And I, when I drink decaf, cause I like the taste, I do like it, like a nice latte. Yeah, I love so I'm going to drink Swiss water. Uh, decaf, which has been non-chemically processed guys. It's, it's filtered through just oh, water. It's amazing. Um, and I used to be like that. I used to drink two monster a day when I was young, plus six, oh. seven coffee. And then at some point oh. I started like being like, fuck. It's like, cause coffee doesn't really give you energy guys. It just blocked the receptor of sleep, of, of sleep, of sleepiness. That's, that's right. So that's exactly right. the thing is when I learned that I was like, I'm actually fucking up my system because I'm crashing and then I need it again. And, and then it just developing a resistance in your body. And I develop very high tolerance. So that's why I was like, could drink a monster and go to bed. And that's the answer that my dad would give me. I can drink coffee when I, before I go to bed, it doesn't mean it doesn't affect you. And it, it's, it's right. crazy because alcohol and coffee are two drugs that people just think it's not so bad. And coffee, they think it's healthy because there's study proving it's healthy. There's right. some positive, but it, if it's done really nicely early in the day. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> when I did stop a coffee and, and I had a friend, we were very like stubborn. So we're very like, once we decide something, we'll do it. And we're comparing ourselves. and, and, and for two weeks, when you stop coffee for two weeks, it's like you're withdrawing from drugs. Like it's really hard on your body. It's really hard on your mind. You feel a little groggy, but once I'm out, Oh my God, I, I swear it feels the best, but like you said, it's not everybody that want to drop coffee. Sometimes I go back to it or I, I, I try cycle and it, it does, it does make a major difference in my sleep. Um, what's like the other few things that, uh, you do. So I'll tell you what I do and you can tell me whatever you, you add to it. So I, sure. I have, um, <clears throat> the aura ring to track my sleep. I have the, uh, yeah, so yeah, I have the sleeping, uh, mattress, like the cooling down my mattress, which, uh, mm -hmm lower your body temperature, which is increase, promote your sleep. I try to always yep. go at the same time in bed and wake up at the same time. And I don't wake up with an alarm. I wake up naturally. Um, Great. I try to avoid caffeine. I don't eat a few hours before sleep. And, yep. um, you do everything you need to do. That's about it. Like, Blue light. I have, um, actually now I have a red light. If I need to work late, I have my little red light here. Oh, and then yeah. it's blocking the blue light and it's just making sure I go to sleep. Yeah. You're doing absolutely everything you, you would need to do, okay? Um, and, and, and for folks out there who are listening or who are watching, that might be like, oh my gosh, he's doing all of those <laughs> things. That's a huge laundry list of things to do. So hold on. 
you didn't do all of that starting day yeah. one, right? You picked some things and you got there. Then you added some things and you got there, right? It, just like we were talking about this habit of the month idea, right? You can do the exact same thing with sleep. So what I tell people all the time is start with waking up at the same time, seven days a week. Okay. Now I get it. People say, Oh, Michael, I want to sleep in on Saturdays. Oh, I want to crash on Sundays. Let me explain to you the science behind why this is a terrible, terrible idea. I'm all in. So when we, <laughs> when we wake up every morning, let's say we wake up at six o'clock in the morning, just to make the math simple. Okay. Sunlight hits our eyeball and we have a special cell in our eye called a melanopsin cell. And it sends a signal to our brain to turn off the melatonin faucet in your head that's making you sleep. Okay, so sunlight off with the melatonin. Perfect, 6 a.m. every single day. Here's the problem is not only does it do that, but there's a timer that your brain sets for 14 hours later for melatonin to start back up again. Always 14 hours for everyone. Always 14 hours for just about everyone, okay? Here's where it gets interesting. So if I'm waking up at 6 o'clock Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, right? 14 hours later is 8 o'clock, melatonin kicks in. I can go to bed around 9, 30, 10 o'clock, no problem. Now I stay, I stay in bed until 8 o'clock, two hours. My brain doesn't tell time. It's a timer. So 14 hours after 8 is 10 o'clock. So melatonin doesn't start till 10, which means I can't fall asleep until midnight. So what ends up happening is your natural ability to sleep changes by the exact amount that you sleep in. So if you sleep in for two hours, your <clears throat> brain is not going to be able to sleep that night for an additional two hours. So this is why Mondays suck because you stay up late on Friday, sleep in on Saturday, stay up late on Saturday, sleep in on Sunday. And what happens on Monday? You want to stay up and you want to sleep in. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, how there's no real way to break it up. Like I use, um, I use yeah. red light therapy in the morning or sun gazing, whatever you want to do, which will reduce yeah. my fatigue. If I, if I feel like I cheat in my sleep schedule, that's what I do to, and a cold bath, this will wake you up like, like yeah. crazy. Uh, right. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, there's, there's no like real way to, you, you should always do the same, like stay stable. The easiest thing to do is wake up at the same time, seven days a week. Now, a lot of people say to me, well, well, I can't do that. And I have to catch up on my sleep because I only get like four or five hours during the week. They said, but I catch up on sleep on the weekends, Michael. It's all good. Let me tell you something. The definitive study about catch up <clears throat> sleep has been done. Okay. And I'm here to give you the results. Let's go. It does not work. Okay. So they did this for six weeks. They took 40 people for six weeks and they said, you can get five hours of sleep during the week eight hours on the weekend. So you get to catch up by three hours on Saturday and three hours on Sunday. Every single Monday, they would measure mood, memory, focus, and attention. Okay. At the end of the first week, slight decrement. A week later, even every single week for six weeks, they got worse and worse. So if they got an A plus on week one, by the sixth week, they were getting an F in all of their testing. Here's the weird part. None of them knew it. So every single Monday, when you ask them, how do you think you did on your assessment? Not telling them their score. They said, I got an A every single time. So what happens is our brains, when we have lack of sleep, trick us into thinking that it's better than it <clears throat> actually is. Okay. I want to be very, very clear about that. So the people that kept sleeping five hour at better result and were like better. No, when you slept for five hours and then you got eight hours, it got worse, but you thought, no, but the, the, they were probably a group that just was doing five hour the whole every day. So That's they correct. did better. They did good. That group that was. Yeah. If they would have actually, if they had kept their five hours the whole way, they would have actually slept better, not worse. Believe and, it or not. Okay. So I really like my nap. How would you do? So I really like, like at 12 or whatever, nap. I'm going to do a nap, a little 20, 20, I put 25 minutes on the timer uh, or I do a meditation, yep. but 25 minutes because 20 minutes, I don't want to feel groggy. Would that for someone to catch up sleep, that would be the best solution. So here's the thing. 
Number one, if you have insomnia, if you can't fall asleep at night, don't nap. Mm -hmm. Okay. It just makes the whole thing worse. We're, we're now more talking about biohacking and yeah. sleep optimization. We're not talking about for people with insomnia. People with insomnia should not nap, period. But let's say, I don't know, you only got five hours of sleep last night. You had to catch a plane. Something's going on. You need to take a nap. I got no problems with nap. As a matter of fact, I love taking naps. But you're right. You really want to take them 25 minutes or less. Um, otherwise, you feel like shit when you wake up in the next day uh, or from the nap, rather. So you ever taken a nap and felt worse, not better, yeah. right? That's because your body went into deep sleep, which you don't want to do during a nap. You only want to stay in the light stages of sleep, which is why you only sleep for 20, 25 minutes. You can do a meditation or you can do it or you can actually sleep. A lot of people say to me, well, I can't sleep during the day. Do I still need like a time out? Yes, you do. Yeah. It's a great thing to do. The data is a super duper consistent. Just removing all the stimulation from you can be very, very And you, you put a blindfold, right? Then your nap... Oh, yeah, absolutely. I have an eye mask. I have earplugs. But the other thing that's important, especially for folks out there, is number one, tell somebody that you're going to take a nap. And number two, tell them where you are and when you will be returning from a safety perspective. I have a lot of patients who would go to their car, right? So they work in a factory or they, you know what I'm saying? They'd go to their car to take a nap. Number one, they might nap too long. <laughs> or number two, um, if it was a female, we were worried about safety. Yeah. Right? Lone female in her car taking a nap. You're very vulnerable. Right? And so I even had people who would <clears throat> be, have napping buddies. So one person would sit and play on their phone or listen to music and the other person would fall asleep. And that way they knew that they were safe and then they could rotate off or whatever. So it, it, That's it awesome. And what I did also like – I program my brain with a playlist on Spotify that it's a Solvagio frequency pl playlist and I use it in the plane and I use it at night and I use it for naps. And as soon as my brain hear the frequency, it shut down and right. I trained, I trained my brain for, for sleep that way. Yeah. Is there, and you can, you can do that. There's no question about it. It's just a matter of kind of lining yourself up, understanding your physiology, what works for you, and then just creating your program. Awesome. So, Now that we confirm the hustle thing, because I'm, I'm a little bit anti-hustle, I, I believe in being productive, not only busy, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of people are going to sacrifice their health to make money, and then they're going to sacrifice their wealth to get healthy again. So you know, right. you, you know the deal, and uh, I wanted to make clear for people that sleep is super important, and you're a sleep expert, and it's like, that's amazing. Like, So sleep is needed. Um, Any other advice that you would tell people like in general for health, productivity or stuff like that? I would. So number one, you can't, you can't disregard sleep, obviously, right? I wouldn't have a career if you could. Um, but at the end of the day, I think there's several different things that people need to really think through as an idea. And I mentioned them earlier. One is breathing, mm -hmm. right? So understanding what breathing is, understanding what breath work is, and understanding how valuable it can be as a mental and physical reset for you in, during <clears throat> times of high anxiety, mm -hmm. during times of high excitement, during times of depression, all of these things. Breathing can do amazing, amazing things for you. I want to be very clear. I think everybody should have some type of a breathing practice. And I'm not just talking about walking around and breathing. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about intentional breath. Yeah. Okay. So spending some time focused on your breathing. That's success principle number one, no question about it. I don't know a successful person who's highly successful, who's been able to keep their money, who doesn't know about breath work. I don't know one. Yeah. Okay. Number two, we've already talked about it, hydration. And I'm not talking about hydrating with alcohol or coffee or any of that other silliness, right? I'm talking about real water hydration, right? Understanding electrolyte balance, understanding what's going on in your body. Because remember something, this unit If it is not functioning right and water is one of its fuels, it will fail mm -hmm. and it will fail in a massive way. And sometimes it's in ways you don't even realize. People, when they're dehydrated, they don't think straight. People, when they're dehydrated, make bad decisions. People, when they're dehydrated, make higher risk decisions. If you're a stockbroker and you're dehydrated, you're going to pick the wrong stock. I can literally guarantee yeah. it, right? Because your brain's not thinking right. You're not connecting all the dots and doing all the details. Obviously, sleep is number three. And then the fourth one is movement. Um, move your body. Be mobile. You don't have to run a marathon, right? You don't have to look like Max Chabot. I mean, look <laughs> at this guy. He's, he's a good-looking fella. He's got all that stuff. 
it's great because he's inspiring to me. But at the end of the day, your fitness is about you mm -hmm. and it can just be mobility. Yeah. Okay, look, I'm 54 years old. I don't have to run a marathon, right? I need to be able to walk, right? I need to be able to pick up my dogs, right? When my kids start having children, I need to be able to play with my grandchildren, right? Like thinking through those types of things and just making sure, because here's the problem. When you stop getting mobile, you don't get that back very easily. Yeah. Okay. Like that is not easy to do. Like when your back hurts all the time and you can't, and you can't walk a hundred yards, mm -hmm. that is incredibly limiting to so many things that you want to be able yeah. to do with your life. Right. And I'm not just talking about career. I'm talking about spirituality, I'm talking about time with family, the whole thing. So I would say air, water, sleep and movement. Those four things are, are honestly the things that I have personally found that have been the most successful things for me. And and those are the habits that I keep. Yeah. Right. And, and, you know, this whole idea of habit of the month, you're supposed to throw away the ones that don't work for you. OK, so not every habit that you try, you need to accept. <laughs> Right. These are the habits that I have really found yeah. over many, many years have been the most the best things for me from a success standpoint. And I also believe another thing, Mike, is that success is really about preparation and timing. Be prepared. Be ready. Success will find you. I can assure oh, you. Oh, yeah, that. that's for sure. It's like like I don't believe in luck. I believe in attracting it. And, and like yes. it's like like I did a post this week. It's like you don't attract your queen by chasing her, you attract your queen by being a king. So chase the crown, yep. do you become that best version? And then you will attract whatever in business and all that stuff. So it, yep. it's really good. And I do believe in Brett work a hundred percent. I'm certified Brett work teacher. I'm going to start hosting like Brett work as of 2023. I tested it. I did all of it and it's free. Like Brett work is free for everyone. Like, yes, you can come to my stuff that I would be hosting, but just having your breathing practice, water is free. And uh, sleep is free. So is sleep. So it's like, there's a lot of free shit guys here. If you know the pattern, it's like, yeah. yes, after you can go supplements and you can like spend thousands of dollars in equipment, red light therapy, all that stuff. But like at the end of the day, all those basics thing that Michael was talking about, they're free. Like, yep. and then you can start adding more money and there's things that you can improve when you want the little 1%. But that's what is amazing. Yeah. What would be like, your best investment in time and money that you seen through your career or uh, recently? Yeah. So there's a couple of different things that I can, I can point to. Some are small things and some are bigger things. Um, so I had, Mike, I had a real problem with meditation. Mm -hmm. I could not meditate to save my life. I tried, I went to retreats. I did, I <laughs> bought program. I did it all. And I could not meditate until I actually found this one product that I'm going to show your audience. It's this headband. It's called a Muse, M-U-S-E headband. What you do, it's hardware. You put it on your head. I know it looks ridiculous. You put it on your head like that, right? It's real-time EEG. Okay. So with the app, it tells you <clears throat> what to do. So for me, I had to gamify it because I, what, what would happen is I'd be at these meditation retreats and like, I'd be meditating. And then one eye would open up and I'd be like to the monk, I'd be like, Hey dude, am I doing this right? And he'd be like, shut up and start meditating. You know, like I, I'm, I'm that guy. Like I need constant feedback. What's cool about this was you listen to a particular type of music. And as you get more relaxed, the volume lowers. So you're getting immediate mm. feedback that the volume is lowering. Once you hit an alpha state, it overlays chirping birds. So you, the goal is to make it lower the volume and hear the birds. So now it's a game. Now I'm on, <clears throat> right? Like now I can do this. Yeah. So what's cool about it is I've done literally over 2,000 sessions now with this. And I don't even need this anymore. If I'm traveling and I forgot my muse, I can sit on an airplane. I can put myself into a nice quiet state and I can get there. I now own that skill set. Yeah. And that was something that I, I didn't own before. So I, I would, and, and that has helped me in so many areas, be calmer, more relaxed, but also have more energy and get what I want. And I want to be clear about that. <laughs> if you're out there and you're, you need to ask for or take what you want, not in an aggressive way, not in a bad way, but you need to let people know you're there and you're there for a reason mm -hmm. and you're there to become successful. Yeah. Nobody's going to give you success. It doesn't work that way. I wish it did, um, but it really doesn't. And so having the mindset 
has been a very, very important factor to me. So that was thing number one. The second thing, to be honest with you, my gym membership. Um, just having a place to go mm -hmm. outside of my home um, and having a gym friends to work out with and see and just say, hey, oh, hey, Michael, you're here yeah. again. Just enough community to make me feel as a part of and all that amazing equipment and different things that I can try there. I utilize the trainers. I take some classes. I meet some new yeah. people. Um, that has been a huge, uh, huge factor for me. And then the third one, and this is going to sound uh, kind of ridiculous, but my dogs. Um, <laughs> my, I love my dogs. And uh, you hear me talk about my dogs all the time. But at the end, at the beginning of my morning, every single day, I sit on the floor for two to three <laughs> minutes and I play with my dogs. <clears throat> yeah. And dude, unconditional love it's the every best. single morning. It's, it's, it's the best. It's the best. It's actually for Doug, I'm going to say things about all the three things you said. Dogs, it's been proven. This is scientific data, guys, that it adds 10 to 15 years to your life just because of how it produces hormones and all the pure love that you get. And dogs is the thing that you're going to love without any boundaries. That's why it hurts so bad when they die because you, you're so oh. attached. And I do the same. So I have attached. two Frenchie and I just cuddle them. It's my best part of the morning and um yeah, i have two frenchies too. <laughs> it's, it's the, they're the best get frenchy guys the best. and um <laughs> the other thing is the gym yes and it will take time guys at the beginning just go open-minded go to the gym you'll start when people see that you're going every day and stuff they will get to know you and say hi and and just do your thing and get there yeah. and, and create a habits <laughs> and regarding the um The meditation thing, I did try one of Ed said that was the same with the birds and all that stuff, which is really cool. Uh, two thing I can say is if you do a breathing before meditation, guys, it's going to help you. I know a lot of people say they're not good with meditation. This is a way to trick your brain into a fun game so you don't feel like you're actually not good. But what made you good is not really the game. It did because it helped you to meditate. It's the practice of meditation, which... Yeah. I agree. 2000 time. Of course, now you're, you're really good at it. It's like you trained your brain and that's, that's what it right. is. So nobody is good at meditation. Like, no, there's no good or wrong way. It's do it, stay there, suck it up. And after 10, 15 minutes, normally your prefrontal cortex will deactivate and you'll be ready to go to meditation. Uh, I have an in harmony bed. I have an in harmony pod. It's like, this will get me way faster. Uh, th those are tools that you can get. You can use the muse. You can use a brain tap. There's so many things yeah. like, Oh, I love brain tap. Brain tap is another really good one that I use on a free. I actually use brain tap for napping. So like when I'm ready to take a nap, I put the brain tap on. Oh my God. It's Not next level. Yeah, I had a call with uh, with a uh, Sean actually from BrainTap. Uh, I'm like, I would like to try try the device for three months and see if I want to recommend it to people because I tried so many things for meditation and and you told me it was amazing oh, yeah. and another guy told me so I was like, I'll, I'll try it. But that's that's really cool thing and I like that. My goal, guys, with this podcast is to remember what success means and success means being abundant and being balanced. And Michael is a prime example of being happy, having a life and it doesn't prevent you from having a lot of money because Michael has been very successful and he's wealthy and he did the right stuff and he did something that he loved, but he understood clearly that having those healthy practice, healthy habits and behavior will quantum leap your way to success. And I want to be clear about something, Mike, is it didn't happen for me until I did that. So I struggled. I mean, honestly, up until probably four or five years ago. And also, you know, something that uh, you know, but many people don't know, four and a half, five years ago, I had a cardiac event and ended up in a hospital, mm -hmm. okay, because I was doing the wrong stuff. I was doing too much of one thing and not enough of another thing. I was exercising overboard high, and my hydration was terrible and I ended up in the hospital. Okay. So you can do too much as well as not do enough, <clears> right? It's a, it's literally about yeah. balance. I want people to know and understand, look, it's about balance and everybody's an experiment, right? We're, we're all kind of working on it and trying yeah. to get it to work for ourselves. And so, you know, take tips from other people, but 
You know, like you don't have to lift weights like the buddy at the gym. You can lift weights at your own pace yeah. and have success and goals and, and, and things of that nature. So, so just, you know, cut yourself some slack. You don't have to be an Olympian to go to the gym. Just go there and enjoy yourself. You'll be shocked. No, I love it. It's, that's what I tell people. Like you don't need to look like me if, if you don't enjoy it. I enjoy it and I'm going to run marathon. I want to do Ironman. I want to, now it's a new challenge. I want to hike Kilimanjaro shirtless with Wim Hof, like a shit like that. Like you don't need to be maniac <laughs> like me. It's just. I'm like, what's the next thing? Like, and, and I challenge myself and I want to show you guys what you can do. Cause Wim Hof is inspiring for me. And I see Tony Robin and those guys, they're inspiring because they push their body. That's what I want to be for, for a lot of people. But that's my life. It, it doesn't need to be yours. Like Michael said, train, find, especially have a trainer. If you have the, the money for, if not yeah. download health abundance, it's my app. It's free. It's free guys. There's no excuses. Mm -hmm. There's tons of workout for free. There's a lot of thing you can do and you just need to do it. Um, yeah. I would have like one last question for you would be you your top three books. I'm, I'm, I read a lot. I have a lot of books. Uh, what would be your top three books? So it's a great question. So I, I can tell you what I'm reading right now. Um, there's, there's a lot of books out there that I think are super duper important. Um, I want to, I want to be thoughtful on this. So my, the first book that I really like um, is by a philosopher named Eckhart Tolle, and it's called The Power of Now. Um, <laughs> you really can't go wrong oh my God. with this book. So good. Um, it, is, it, is so, it is so affirming, and it really kind of helps frame a lot, a lot of things mm -hmm. for people. So I, I, I recommend, I definitely am recommending yeah. that one. Um, I just started a book, um, which is kind of interesting for me, Mike. It's a new one. A, fr a dear friend of mine, uh, Fernando bought me this book. It's called The Second Mountain by David Brooks. So this is for people who have retired and <laughs> trying to figure out like, what is the next thing you're going to do? That's cool. So I'm, I'm really gravitating towards a lot of things that I'm learning uh, in here as well. Um, those two books have had a, a pretty big influence on me. Um, and then to be really honest with you, I like spy novels. So I'm always reading a spy story or something fun like that. So right now I'm reading, uh, there's a series of books. Uh, there's a character called Mitch Rapp. There was a movie called American Assassin. Oh, uh, that was a, a, a yeah. the origin story of Mitch Rapp. But this, it's a great uh, line of books uh, that I've, I've really started. There's to two of them. That. Is so it always, the kind of Japanese, whatever? Is it that the American Assassin? Yeah. Yep. Like uh -huh. he has a thing, like a cable with a, and he, he throws stuff like the little, um, fuck, I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I saw, I saw it. It's cool. I like that. It like anti-Japanese fight. It's, it's really cool. It's very fascinating <clears throat> stuff. So for me, I always like to have a fun kind of fiction book. By the way, I read two to three books at the same time. Um, I, that's always how I do it. It's always how I have done it. Um, it's kind of interesting, but I get bored with a book. So I have to, I read it for a little while, then I move to another one, then I read it, another one, and then I move. So those are the, those are the three kind of areas that I have a tendency to look at. Um, I also like health books, um, just to kind of see what's out there. And to be fair, my book is one of the best books out there called The Power of When. Um, my third I'll put book, it in the, uh, I'll, I'll put a link in the, in the bio so people can find yeah, it. Yeah, put a link in the bio. I, I gotta be honest with you. Like, I'm really proud of that book. We've sold over 145,000 copies. Wow. Uh, it's in 17 languages. That's amazing. And uh, yeah, it, it's really been an eye opener for people. And it was fun to write and fun to work on. So if you get a chance and you like to yeah, read. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll buy it for sure. And that's amazing. And the power of now, this and four agreement literally changed my life. And I, I used right. to not understand, like, you know, like my mom was always like, you're always on your phone, but like, you're not really present. I was like, I'm busy making money. What the fuck are you talking about? And then she's like, well, you're not present. And then I started being aware of what I was missing, like driving the nature. And I'm like, fuck, actually it's life is about how you do life. It's how you are. It's, it's what, it's not like the end. It's like, you need to enjoy, enjoy the journey. So if you're not present in the journey, trust me, when you're going to reach fame, money, whatever, you're not going to be happy. It's not going to be what you think. Right. So be present. Um, on that note, I want to thank you for your time. Thank you for your advice. I will put uh, your bio and the link and your book and all that good stuff. And um, do you have a little word of the end and also tell them where they can find you? 
Absolutely. So you can find me at my website, which is thesleepdoctor.com. You'll never forget it. I have the same on all the socials. So <laughs> Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, I'm the sleep doctor. Everybody knows me. You'll find all kinds of great, fun information there. And if I'm going to give people um, a piece of information to part with, I'm going to give people a five-step program for guaranteed better sleep. Step number one, wake up at the same time every single day, including the weekends. Step number two, stop caffeine by 2 p.m. Step number three, stop alcohol three hours before bed. Okay. Step number four, exercise daily, but stop exercise four hours before bed. And step number five, when you wake up in the morning, do these three things. Take 15 deep breaths and bring yourself present. Drink 15 ounces of water and hydrate. And then go outside and get 15 minutes of sunlight to get your vitamin D and to turn off that melatonin faucet. I love it. Thank you. I'm doing all that and it's it's amazing. One thing I will catch up on you that I forgot to ask. I will let you go, but I wanted to ask, I'll ask later, is uh, I know you already told me, but how to fight jet lag. So this I can always, if you have a little um, stuff. I do. So there's an app that I use. It's called Time Shifter. And it's amazing. You use light melatonin, caffeine, and napping in a very particular order for jet lag. I personally have used it to Beijing, um, Australia, and um, Portugal. And uh, it worked amazingly, amazingly well. It's called Time Shifter. It's in the App Store. Um, I am part of Time Shifter, full disclosure. I'm an investor as well as partially developed. Awesome. I'll text it right now. And... Uh... I will make it in the note. Amazing, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learn. Uh, Michael is an amazing guy. He knows what he's talking about. And um, I really respect him. He's a hard worker. He did a lot of great things. And I hope you learn from, especially not only sleep, but how to be happy and abundant because that's what Michael is. So I'll see you in another episode, guys. I wish you an amazing day. Sweet dreams. <laughs>